morning, Jordan. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah. You're here with you're here with ATM Fox. Welcome to the channel. It's All Time Media. We make these videos for educational purposes only. How old are you, Jordan? I'm 33. Okay, you look young for your Thank age. You. <laughs> Where are you from? Um, well, I was born in Jersey. Um, I spent a lot of time in Philly, though. I came here for school. Um, I lived in St. Louis for a long time, California for a little bit, so I'm a little bit of a gypsy in the country, I guess. Okay. Kind of been all around the country, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was your childhood like? Did you grow up out Jersey or? Um, most of it, yeah. Uh huh. Um, my mom raised us, me and my brother, most of the, most of my, I had a dad, but he was kind of was into alcoholism at the time. Um, so he wasn't around much when I was younger, but he got sober when I was like 21 and then me and him got a little bit closer. But, um, yeah, I'm a single mother, typical. And she worked like three jobs to keep, you know, me and my brother happy. We never really, knew we were poor but we were my dad never paid child support um we like lived in campgrounds for a couple years i know we lived in our car for a little bit so mm. a little bit here we never knew we were you know me and my brother we made the most of it. we just thought it was an adventure the whole time so yeah that was pretty typical i guess it was rough so. you and your brother y'all stuck together huh yeah yeah we're a twin brother but he passed away um oh. four years ago so. sorry for your loss yeah. jordan mm -hmm. But I come from a family of addiction and alcoholism. Uh, everyone in my family, pretty much as, as much as I know, my extensive family, everyone is either an alcoholic or an addict. So. How did your brother pass away? He overdosed. Mm -hmm. That's, I relapsed uh, when he overdosed. I had like five years clean at the time. And I came back to Philly. I was in California. I came back to Philly for the funeral. Mm -hmm. And in the back of my head, I knew I was going to use, I think at that point, I just wanted to because that's how I cope with things. Um, so I came back. I didn't even make it to the funeral, uh, but ended up relapsing and I've been here ever since. So let me get this straight. You were clean. Mm -hmm. Your brother overdosed out here. So you came back from Cali mm -hmm. to see, uh, see your brother at the funeral and you ended up using. Yep. Yeah. Then, no. I've then, been stuck here ever since. That was, this is my second run down here. So. Mm -hmm. It's been so, like about four years this time. Four years? Mm -hmm. That was four years ago all of that happened. Mm -hmm. I lost uh, my stepdad was an alcoholic. He died from liver cirrhosis about six months after my brother passed away. And like the love of my life died <laughs> like a year after that too, overdose. So it was a, it was a rough uh, couple years. And it just kind of kept me just rolling in addiction, you know? Like I just didn't, I didn't have a reason to come up for air. Like, what substances are, are you? What substances are you currently uh, addicted to? Um, crack and fentanyl or whatever it is they give us. <laughs> um, my fentanyl drug addiction has gone down a lot. Um, I smoke it. I probably smoke two bags a day, maybe. Um, but my crack addiction is pretty heavy. Definitely, I smoke like a Navajo when it comes to crack. <laughs> but how how much daily would you say? Um. It really varies on the money that that I have, or you know what I mean. I don't know. I feel like with any addiction, it's kind of what it is. But I try to like keep it at a at a minimal. But I feel like the more money I have, the more I'll spend. Um, there can never be, you know, you can never have enough when you're an addict. Like, um, but probably anywhere from I don't know because there's days if I'm not around here, if I'm out in the suburbs, I can stretch like twenty dollars worth of crack. But then there's times that I could have four hundred dollars worth of crack and smoke it. You know what I mean? Like in an hour, it just doesn't. It doesn't really, it varies. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, I know. If I, I keep track of my, I'm an escort, but I keep track of my uh, like cash app statements and stuff, it's like sickening on how much, I couldn't tell you how much cash I got to do because I really don't keep track, but I know on cash app alone monthly, it's anywhere from 3500 to $4,500 mm. that I make. And um, yeah, that's all. Monthly, you said? Yeah, and that's just on cash app. That's not, that's not my cash intake, that's only cash app transactions. So that's a lot of, so definitely all the drugs, <laughs> like, it's, the drugs, it's, yeah, all for sure. Going to drugs. I mean, I buy, you know, I buy food and clothes and necessities, like, you know, but it's nowhere close to what I spend on drugs. Right. said, uh, you're an escort. Mm -hmm. What's it like escorting? Personally, um, I honestly do get, it's not like, I, I meet a lot of really good people doing it. I've met a lot of people the last time I got sober, the people that I met, um, on Backpage helped get me clean. Uh, I meet really, really good people doing it. Um, okay. 
and I try to keep it like I don't <laughs> I try not to see people or I wouldn't would have waved at you yeah <laughs> <laughs> I try not to see people I wouldn't want to see you know what I mean like I'm not going to be with somebody that makes me uncomfortable or that I'm not you know what I mean that I'm like cringing I try not to do that I really right. had I really have had a uh, pleasure getting to know a lot of the people that I've met right. um they're just really good people most of them are really educated um I don't know they're just interesting people a lot of them um doing it online is a lot it's a whole nother whole nother ball game as opposed to doing it out here on Kensington Avenue and I put on my time on the avenue, but it's 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 not it's it's scary out there, and it's it's just not really as long as you have a phone or somebody willing to help you post online, it's a lot safer, you make a lot more money. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's just if that's what you're gonna do with your situation, it's definitely a lot a lot better. It's not beneficial for you, profitable and safer wise. Did did you know that guy that uh, drove by? And yeah, he's down you? here all the time. <laughs> he just drives up and down the avenue. I've oh. never, I've never, he pulls over and talks to you, but I've never, I've never done a date with him or anything, but he was always waving, so. Oh, okay. I wave back. I don't know his name, but. <laughs> How often do you, uh, escort? Um, he said, I post online normally, um, so it really just, it just varies, whatever, you can really do whatever you want to do as much as you want to do it, um, all depends on how you're feeling that day, I guess, uh, I have a few people, I really see this, pretty much the same people, um, a lot, and that's just the safest way for me to do it. Um, so that I know I'm not setting myself up for some, you know, whatever, getting arrested by the cops or some, a dangerous situation. It's just easier to see people that I already know. Um, cause I've been down here for about four, four and a half years. So I right. know I have a pretty good, you know, list of people I can see, but <laughs> are you, are you currently homeless? No, no, I live in Southwest Philly. Okay. That's good. That's good. I've, I've managed to, uh, I'd say probably like 95% of the time that I've been out here, I have a roof over my head. Um, I, I I know a lot of decent people. They're always willing to help, and I've never really given anybody a reason. You know, I've never I try not to break my bridges. So, and how often are you out here then? Kansas um, State. I really come down here mostly a cop. Um, sometimes I end up getting stuck down here just walking around, or like I see people and I want to hang out. But um, I mean, I come down to cop a lot every other day to every day. It just depends, really. Hmm. What would you say it's like? What? Kensington. What it's this, like? This place, yeah. It's not like anything else, that's for sure. Um, I've lived a lot of places, and there's really no place like Kensington. Uh, it's, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like hedonism. It's like, it's, I don't know, it's just like, a, it, it's, it's overindulgence. Like, it's like I, everybody here just is overindulging in everything that they're in, and it's, I don't know. It's not. It's just. I don't know. I really don't know. It's unique. It's very unique. But mm-hmm. and with you, with that, you get a lot of. I mean, different outcomes as far as like crime or violence or you know whatever. There's just this weird stuff down here all the time. But I just think that comes with the mixture of drugs and people's already mental chemistry or whatever. But I never used to think it was. I mean, I never felt like it was that dangerous. Um, I think the crime and like the shootings and everything has gotten way worse. I think PUA really kicked it off. I think everybody got a taste of free, easy money and they wanted to keep it going. And then that's because that's really what I noticed that everybody's getting robbed and all these all the gunshots mm-hmm. everything just got worse because people were taking, taking, taking because they wanted mm-hmm. something that they just had a taste of and they wanted it back. And um, everybody got their habits up because they had all that money. So I just think that really since then, I, I've lost a lot of, like, I mean, not a lot, but a good amount of friends do either, you know, stray bullets or violence or if they work on a block and they got shot, it's, it's pretty, it's bad. And it was it never seemed to be like that when I was out here before. Um, everybody kind of had a place where they belonged and they stayed there. But now it's just like you've got four different people selling on one block and it's, you know, it's just like it gets it gets heated. And that, that heat you know, you're giving like a 14 year old a gun to protect the black. They've never used a gun before. Of course, it's something bad's gonna. It's just like it's getting out of control with that. Like, you know, they yeah, give the 14 year olds the guns. You know, like they, they hand them what I've seen. Like, yeah, they, whoever's working on the block, however old they are, there's young kids out there. There's 14 just, year olds out there working oh, on the block. Oh, sure, yeah. And they just hand them. You know, they hand them. I've had. They ask you where the safety is. They don't even know how to use a gun. They've never been to a shooting range, and you're handing them a block and or a gun and telling them, to, you know, do what they need to do with it. Like that's what happens. And we have all these, you know, innocent people getting hit by bullets because these people have never even used a gun before, and they think they're doing something, you know, 
to protect to protect what they're working for and it's not it's all you know what i mean it's just too much it's that's a kid you yeah. should be reading books right not holding guns right. shooting them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. have you ever been victimized out here um i mean uh, i think as when you work on the avenue as far as escorting it definitely comes with the territory unfortunately like i don't i don't know a girl territory? out here I don't know a girl out here that hasn't have been sexually abused um, mm. while working on the avenue. I don't know a single one. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes more it happens more than it should, uh, but it's definitely it's definitely it's it happens, and I think it takes a toll on you emotionally, mm. for sure, because you kind of learn to just numb it and just you know you got to keep doing what you got to do to feed your addiction. So it just kind of gets put to the back, and then you get sober, and all that stuff comes to light. It's really a lot to deal with because you don't deal with it now. But um, aside from that, like. I've never really been, I mean, I've never been, I've had, I don't think I've, I've never been like robbed, like, you know, strong armed or anything out here. Um, my best friend died last 4th of July by a stray bullet in the park. Mm, sorry to hear that. Best friend? Yeah, yeah, she was awesome. Um, that's really why I come to this, that's why I like coming to this park all the time. That's kind of my little. How long were y'all close for? I met her the first week I was out here, so, you know, about three and a half years. Mm. Which isn't, you know, but in Kensington time, that's pretty much my whole time. Was out here this time, best friend, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she was a really, I mean, I know we would have been friends outside of this if we had met outside of this, but this is where we met. It's crazy. This is a place. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And, and you already know, like, you say outside of this. <laughs> outside of this, like, addiction. Kensington is just like a, a black hole, don't you think? Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. It's like, a, it's hard to get out of here. And I think the comfortability of it is, comes from usually when people use drugs, they're ashamed or there's a type of shame that goes with it where it's something that they, um, you know, they hide or whatever. They don't do it in front of people. But down here, that doesn't, you know, you have people shooting up on the side of the road. You have people out in the public getting high. And that's, that's, the, that's the normal down here. So that comfortability is something that people can relate to. So when they want to get clean and they have to go into a, a normal setting that's not, you know, you can't get high out public and it's, just, it's a lot to handle. So that's, you know, it's easier for them to fall back into this trap because it's just where they feel comfortable as an addict, as a, someone, if, you know, whatever, if you have a mental disability. There's just a lot of things here that people can relate to. And right. it's, it's, it's just, like I said, it's just the normal here. Like, you know, I mean, everybody here has similar problems. You don't feel uncomfortable about your addiction. So it's easy to stay here. It's easier to get stuck here because you, you're just comfortable. You know, you're not, if you're at home with your, and nobody gets high, you know, you're hiding in the bathroom or whatever you do to feel ashamed of getting high. That's not, that doesn't exist here. You know what I mean? We're the majority here. So it's just, you know what I mean? We, we, people are just out in the open with it and it's just, it's just comfortable. You're out in the open. So everybody sees. It's easy to get stuck here because you got everybody around using comfortably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, what's the what's the last one? Uh, the numbing pain. Mm-hmm. There's always somebody the worse numbing, than you. You know what I mean? Numbing pain. So I'm not that bad because this person shoots up in their forehead, or I'm not this bad. You know, I mean, there's always somebody that you think is worse than you, and so that keeps you, you know, as your addiction, not that bad. You know, but it, in reality, it is. You know, it is, but because we're here. <laughs> now, Jordan, do you have any kids at all? I don't. Do I'm so happy you don't. I've managed so happy you don't. to, I've, I've, I've been pregnant once in my life and it was when I was down here and it was with a boy that I, I was t- dating, like, you know, we'd been dating for about a year. Mm-hmm. Um, dating I, or like, no, like we, I mean, we, well, we had met out here, but we were exclusive. Um, okay. but I got an abortion cause I was still getting high and I don't think I, and I'm not, everybody has their reasons or other, you know, some people might whatever the religious reasons i just don't believe that it's you know it's hard for me to see i know girls out here to have multiple kids while they're out here and it's like they don't see any of them they're all in the system um what's the point you know what i mean you don't want to get an abortion but you'd rather give birth to a kid that has doesn't know their parents or is probably coming out of the womb with withdrawal and like you know what i mean that's just if i'm not going to go through withdrawal myself i can't put a baby through that i don't think that's right but everybody has their own opinion i just I wouldn't have been right for me. I wasn't emotionally, financially, mentally stable enough to have a kid. And I don't think the, I don't think the father of the baby would have been either. He wasn't, you know, in his right state of mind. So I just don't think it, the, the odds were definitely against me. Um, 
and the baby. So I just didn't, you know, I didn't feel it was right to, to go through with it. Um, and it definitely, I had bad postpartum. I waited until I was the very last week that I could get an abortion. I was seven months pregnant. Mm. So I was really uh, in tune, you know, with, with the fetus and everything. And it was it was definitely traumatizing in, in a way for me. Um, I had bad postpartum depression after that. But um, it was definitely what I needed to do at the time. I, I just don't, you know, I couldn't picture myself with a kid right now. If I was clean in another place, like maybe, like definitely I'm old enough, you know, but I'm not mature in the ways enough to raise a kid right now right. Or, or stable, you know, I can't, I don't want to put a child into the cycle of poverty and everything, you know, it's just not, not on my list. Right. I, I can agree with that. I'm glad you, uh, you're capable of understanding that, um, out here, if you do get pregnant, you know, you, you there's know, options, in you know. a good, stable situation. Yeah, take there's care there's of options. It's hard. And a lot of the working girls, I, I mean, Thank you for sharing it and, and learning from their experiences, you know, yeah. seeing what, what goes on. Yeah. What what you say about your... Uh, I name my stems. This is Captain Crack Sparrow. Captain, <laughs> Captain Crack Sparrow, like Captain Jack Sparrow. Mm -hmm. I have Stemmy Moore, Stemmy Lovato, Mary Tyler Shore, Michael Craxon, uh, Bernie Crack. Bernie Crack. Bezzy Arnaz, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Smokey Robinson, <laughs> Scotty Pippen. Pipey Longstocking. Oh, my. A lot of pipe names. What made you start doing that? <laughs> I don't know. I get bored. <laughs> I'm amused easily. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jordan, do you want to get clean at all? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's hard to make an exit strategy, especially if you don't have the means, like resources, money, or whatever to do so. Because um, I don't. it's hard for me to stay clean in, in Philly. Like, every time I've gotten clean, it's when I get out of here, like, out, out of here, you know. Like, I... St. Louis. I lived, went back to St. Louis and got clean, clean in California. Um, it's just a lot easier. My dad lives in Florida, so I'm thinking of using his address to get Medicaid down there and try down there. Um, That's good. Yeah, I just don't. I can't be anywhere close. If I can get here, <laughs> I'll get here. So You got clean when you left here, left yeah, this area. Yeah, absolutely. And people say, that, yeah, there's drugs everywhere, but it, it's not in your face. Like, you're, like you get stamped, you get free drugs here. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's right there. Like, you don't... <laughs> People will give them to you. Like anywhere else, you have to know. So you know, have to go a little bit out of your way to get there. And once you're clean, you really don't want to make that effort. So it's not, you know, if it's out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. But here, it's definitely easier to use than it is to get clean. It's not like that everywhere, though. Like I've noticed also in other cities, like it's a lot easier to get clean to get on methadone and things. Here, like you have to have an ID, you have to have insurance. Like I've lived in multiple cities where you can walk into a methadone clinic, you just give them your security number, and you pay cash, and you'll get methadone. And like, I don't understand why there's all these hoops to jump through here when we have like, you know, a prior, or like a big part of the opioid crisis is here. Right. And we it's make it harder for you people to get clean here than other places. So it doesn't really make sense to me. But. You're very smart, Jordan. <laughs> where, where did you go? I went to Temple. I graduated from Temple. Graduated from Temple? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what did you... uh? Broadcast journalism. Wow. <laughs> I might be able to get a few pointers <laughs> off of you. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. You gotta use that. I know. You utilize that. I want to do nonprofit stuff when I get my shit together and do like right. grant writing. Grant writing pays really well. Um, but yeah, I want to do some nonprofit stuff. I've been kind of researching that stuff on my own. But I used to do like music journalism and stuff in college. I would like cover um, shows and stuff at different venues. Um, my dad used to work in the music business when I was really young. And I was too young to appreciate it at the time before YouTube came out. He was a record promoter. So I remember going to the music stations with him. And I used to, I met Aerosmith and Led Zeppelin and all these mm. awesome people. Um, but yeah, like I said, I was too young to appreciate it. But like Rolling Stone probably would have been like my dream job or something like that for sure. <laughs> You're very smart, man. Your, your father, you keep bringing him up. He's cool now. He's got his shit together now. He's, he's like 12 years clean. That's good. That's uh -huh. good. Yeah. But he had, he, had a little, he had a little run for a while, man. You I mean, I definitely come him. from a party family. Um, yeah, I talk to yeah. him now here and there. I, I mean, I check in and let them know, especially because my brother's gone. I don't want them, uh, you know, feel like they have new kids left. It's, it's, you know, I try to check in as much as I Are can. You trying to help you beat this addiction at all? Or I think they 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 have yeah. they definitely have. I just think they're kind of uh, not fed up. But you know what I mean? Like it's it's they definitely put in their efforts before, and I kind of just you know came back you know in a way like shit all over them. So. You know, they, they're there if I need them. I know they'll help in ways that they can. But, you know, last time I got clean, like, I, my, I went to St. Louis where my mom was, but she wouldn't let me stay with her, so I lived in a homeless shelter. They're definitely the tough love type. Um, 
definitely. <laughs> but they're, they're there, uh, you know, if I really need them, I know they'll be there. It's just, they're not going to really, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Jordan, where, where do you see yourself in the next three months? Hopefully making a plan and getting out of here. Um, like I said, it kind of just depends on financial stuff to see where, you know, to get to actually get somewhere. Um, I need to get an ID. And I've never had a Philly ID, so after that, when I obviously, my social security card and birth certificate have been long lost, so I have to do all that stuff, which is overwhelming, uh, but it's not that, not that complicated. So hopefully getting the stuff I need to get to get out of here and making steps towards that. Any thoughts on quitting the escorting and uh, getting a job? Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, that's just, that's totally something I do that's tied to my addiction. Um, mm. When I'm, yeah, when I'm sober and stuff, I, yeah, I'll bartend, I've managed bars, I've done, like, I've, I'm really, I'm into, like, bar. I don't drink, but I love, like, cocktail consulting. I'm really good at all that mixology stuff. Um, so I like to do that. I'm a good people person. Mm -hmm. And that okay. pays, that pays well, too, because you're, you're used to the fast, easy money, you know, when you escort, it's just like, you know, when you get, like, a paycheck and you're sober, you're like, what the fuck, you know, it's like, it's hard to wait that long. So I like, you know, getting... Fast money comes with, you know, restaurant business and stuff is similar. So that's kind of what I go towards usually. Uh, yeah, definitely get back into it. You know, you're a people person. You know how to talk. Mm -hmm. So use that to your advantage. You don't got to be out here uh, satisfying and pleasuring. These yeah, I've done some weird stuff for money, perverts. but some weird stuff for money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ain't got to talk about it. <laughs> it is what it is. But uh, just, just look forward. I, I see uh, good fortune in your future. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, just try to slim down, stop using as much. And eventually yeah. you're going to kick it, get the H out of here like you plan on. Uh, hit your father up, see if you can get into that program like you said. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, it's there. It's in the making. It's all good things we talked about. Yeah. So it's been a great interview. And I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and speak to me. You know? Absolutely. My name is ATM Fox. Like I say, we make these videos for educational purposes only. You've been a wonderful interviewee for me, Jordan. Um, last question. What will you tell the youth out here ripping and running the streets, following in the same footsteps as you? What advice would you give them? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> There's, too, there's so much <laughs> things I wish I would have listened to when people told me when I was younger. Um, honestly, just to slow down, I think. I think the youth, I have god kids that are like 10 and 11, and they're so grown up when they're around their friends, but I know they cry like little babies. You know what I mean? Just you don't have to be or act like older or something that you're not. You know what I mean? Just slow down and appreciate the person you are and the things that are around you and take things one, one day at a time for sure. Everybody moves really fast nowadays, I feel like. It's like nobody appreciates the slow when little things happen. Like, so. Jordan, you're here with All Time Media. It's been great talking to you. Um, if you ever need our help, we're going to be around and give you some contact information so you can contact us if you need anything. Cool. We're going to be there every step of the way trying to help you get, cl get clean. Thank you. My name is ATM Fox. I got ATM Reed to the left of me. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. Join All Time Media's Patreon for exclusive content and behind the scenes content and face to face live video chat. Thank you, guys. The link is in the description below.